how to completely transform your life in three months or less. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. Welcome to the Quit by Healing podcast. This podcast is all about men's mental health and men's self-development. And one of the things I talk a lot about is overcoming porn addiction, which really is overcoming a type of overstimulation and addiction. If you want to level up your life, if you want to actually fulfill your true potential, that's one of the things you've got to do. You cannot have your your life being ran by various addictions. You can't be under the spell of the addictive nature of things like pornography and social media and various stimulants and so on. But this is all part of the bigger picture. And today I want to talk a bit more about that bigger picture. Let's come at it from this angle. Is it actually possible to completely transform your life in just a few months? And what I mean by that is, what if the place you're in right now is that you just don't feel very good about your life? Maybe you feel kind of directionless. You're not sure what to do with your life. It feels like your life is going nowhere. Maybe you feel like everything's kind of pointless or you just don't know what to do with yourself. And it's like, you know, am I supposed to have a career? What career should I have? What should I do? Where am I going? Basically, maybe it feels hopeless. Even maybe it feels to you like I'm not good at everything. I'm not good at anything. I don't know how to make anything of myself. Maybe it also just feels like everything feels kind of dissatisfying, right? It's like you tend to experience depression, anxiety, a lot of like negative self-talk, all this kind of stuff. You're just not in a good place, right? You're not happy with how things are going. And the question is, okay, is it actually possible to turn this around? And the answer is absolutely. And in fact, you are closer to living an amazing life than you think you are. But in order to do so, and I am going to go into like detail, like how exactly to do this. But the first thing we need to talk about is the thing that you will encounter if you do this. Inevitably, you will encounter resistance in various forms, right? But it will be uncomfortable, basically. And why is that? Here's how to understand this. Basically, look at the average result the people around you are getting and understand that when you do average things, that's where you end up. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look around, I have to say that the average outcome is not great. There's all kinds of statistics that show lots of numbers going up that don't look very good. Things like, you know, obesity and overweight, right? It's like we're getting to the point where most developed countries, it starts to become like it's more than half of people are overweight or obese. And basically, they're probably not very healthy. They're not very fit. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be healthy and fit and also, you know, just feel good in my skin, feel good in my body. And also lots of other things, you know, all kinds of mental health markers are keep getting worse, like more and more people are being diagnosed with all kinds of mental health conditions and more and more people are on all kinds of medications. So many people are dependent on various substances and stimulants, right? It's like, okay, you don't get enough sleep ever and the only way you function is coffee and energy drinks and stuff like that, right? All of this stuff to me is an indication that the average person is not doing that great. Also like the average person is probably in debt, probably not in a great financial position, is not that happy and so on, right? So in all likelihood, when you look around and you look at the average results people are getting, you're like, hmm, I'd like to you know, be healthier, happier, more successful. I'd like to get better outcomes than the average person. Here's why this is important to realize. Like I said, when you do average things, you get average results. And that makes sense, right? Now, why does this happen? Basically, the average results people get are essentially a result of the environment we live in. The environment you live in, and that's literally like the physical environment, but also the the cultural environment, the social environment that you live in, exerts something like a gravitational force that pulls everything towards itself. Anything you do that goes against the average is kind of like resisting that gravitational force. So it's like sitting in a chair or lying in bed is really easy. You're letting gravity settle you in, right? It's super comfy. Working against that gravitational force is difficult and uncomfortable. So that's like climbing up a steep set of stairs or climbing up a ladder or climbing up a mountain, right? You're working against gravity. And the further away you want to go from average, so the higher the mountain you want to climb, the more work it is and the more discomfort you will feel. And often this is like social discomfort. You're doing things 
that are not the norm, which you need to do in order to get results that are not the norm, but you look around and you're like, wait, am I, is this weird? Why is nobody else doing this? Nobody seems to agree with me. Maybe people even, you, you notice that people like push back against you, right? When you have ambition and you start pursuing things that are above average, you'll notice that a lot of people might like, be like taking stabs at you or telling you, oh no, you know, you might as well give up. This is never gonna work, this kind of stuff, right? So you experience like the resistance of doing things that are not the average thing to do. That's something you have to overcome. And it feels strange and it feels, it gives you also a sense of uncertainty because it's like, oh, why is nobody else doing this? Am I doing the wrong thing and so on, right? You, you have to leave that comfort of, I'm doing the socially acceptable thing that everybody's doing. You know, there's something comfortable about that, right? You have to leave that comfort. And you have to realize that this, this discomfort and uncertainty that you feel is actually a sign that you're doing the right thing. Right away, most people just can't overcome that resistance. Most people just can't get themselves to do things that are, that are like slightly strange, essentially. And that's why you go with the flow and that's why you end up getting average results. And like we discussed, average results usually aren't that great. With that said, and I'm saying all this because the first thing that I recommend if you want to turn your life around dramatically and quickly, the first thing I recommend, I think the most effective thing you can do is replace all of your passive consuming activity with two things, skill building and creative activity. So think about all of the time you spend passively consuming stuff. All of the time you spend scrolling through social media, using other apps on your phone kind of for entertainment stimulation also consuming things like news right news websites and things like that watching videos watching shows watching movies playing video games all this kind of stuff everything you do that is like consumption for distraction and entertainment if you cut all of that out for most people that frees up an enormous amount of time right we're talking multiple hours a day of time that you now that are, that are suddenly freed up and right there, that's the potential for changing your life, okay? If you can do something for two, three, four hours a day, you can very rapidly make a huge difference in your life. Of course, this is uncomfortable because, well, nobody else is doing this. Plus, all of this stuff is very comforting. It's a nice little escape. It's a nice distraction. So, of course, you want to be doing it. And my, my very suggestion to cut this stuff down to zero might seem extreme. But it's only extreme because everybody else is a consumer zombie, basically, right? Like keep in mind that not that long ago, a few decades ago, none of this was even available, okay? And people would waste their time in front of the TV or whatever, right? And then you go a few more decades back and you don't even have TVs. And then you realize that actually the way we live now is a very, very recent phenomenon and maybe everybody's unhappy and depressed and overweight and so on because it's not good for us. But anyway, all of this is to say that what seems like an extreme idea now it's only extreme because everybody, basically nobody's doing it. But there lies the potential because not only does cutting out all of this consumption stuff free up enormous amounts of time, but also it changes the configuration of your brain. And really the problem with all of this consumer culture and the problem with constant simulation, see this is an extension of the porn addiction problem is we are so used to constantly stimulating ourselves. We are so used to always getting the little dopamine hits on demand all the time. This changes your brain. This changes how you perceive reality. This changes your expectations in a dramatic way and in a way that's not great for your long-term success. It's not great for your long-term happiness. It's not great if your goal is to live a fulfilling life because there's no way to consume yourself to a fulfilling life, right? There's no way to consume your way to the kind of success and richness of experience and connection and so on that you seek. In fact, all of the consumption, all it can do is take you further away from it. It can remove you further away from your actual goals because the more you are stimulation seeking, the less you, the more you're used to spending your time that way, the less able you are to do things like figure out what do I want and then do like the focused pursuit of that thing, which always means that somehow you have to be able to bring sustained focus and concentration to that one thing, right? You have to decide, here's something that's important to me. And, and then you have to go after it. And nothing in real life is on so short a cycle as 
video games and social media and all the other forms of stimulation that we're used to. So we're just so used to like, I want something and immediately I get a tiny hit of it, right? Immediately I get a bit of a reward. And nothing in real life, nothing worth getting, nothing you actually want works like that. Everything is on a longer timeline. And so one of the things that happens when you cut out all of this instant stimulation is that you become more and more used to the longer cycle motivation and reward, okay? You become more and more used to like, it's normal to want something and then spend several hours to get to take one step towards your goal. And it feels rewarding. It's like, yes, today I put in five hours and that takes me a bit closer to my goal. That can also be rewarding, but compared to, you know, 5,000 hits of dopamine uh, in one hour, it doesn't compete, right? And that's what I mean when I say it changes your brain. It changes your brain in very, very important ways if your goal is to live a better life and become a better version of you, if your goal is to like actually unfold your full potential. So that's why my primary, like that first thing to do, the most effective thing you can do is cut out all of this stimulation and replace it with skill building and with creative activity. By the way, again, I know super uncomfortable, sounds like it's too much and so on. I highly recommend that you do a 30 day Spartan mode challenge. And I'll link to in the description, a link to my videos on that. So I have the instructions for how to do this. This is a very specific protocol, a very carefully designed protocol for how to do this. And there's also like the case study of the last time I did this, I did a little documentary on it. So you can get a, an example of what does this actually look like. And it's really good to do because part of Spartan mode is cutting out all of this stuff to zero and replacing it with other activities. It's just 30 days, right? So it's not forever. Sometimes you can feel like, oh my God, I can't say no to this forever. Do it for 30 days. It gives you a taste of what's possible. It gives you, and 30 days is long enough to also give you a taste of how your brain changes, right? Of, of how you feel and see things differently. That would be my first recommendation. And the Spartan Mode Challenge is a way to get a preview of that, a way to try this out, right? So now I said, okay, it frees up all this time and the two things to, to fill that time with is skill building and creative activity. Let's start with creative activity. This is really just the flip side of consumer culture, right? We're so used to always consuming stuff. The fix, part of the fix is just replace consumption with creative work. And creative work is really just anything where you are creating something out of nothing, okay? So creative activity is sometimes it's just the flip side of, of what you've been consuming. So if, if you constantly, you know, eat prepared meals and order takeout and whatnot, make your own food. Like cooking is a creative activity. And as it turns out, not only is it much cheaper and much easier to give yourself a really healthy, well-rounded, balanced kind of nutrition if you make your own food, also learning how to do it, going like, hey, you know what? I want to eat healthy food that is you know, aligns with my goals. So maybe you have certain macro targets, right? You're like, okay, I need to get a certain amount of protein and because I'm exercising and I have exercise goals and whatnot, and I want my food to be healthy and I want it to be tasty and I want it to fit into my budget, how do I do that? Learning how to do that can be a great learning experience. It can also be a lot of fun and it teaches you more than you might expect. And that's very simple, right? Instead of consuming junk food, create your own food. Great. And the same thing can be like, instead of consuming content, create content, okay? I mean, this is one of the things I do. I am not a consumer of a lot of media. Uh, I'm, I'm not a consumer at all of certain kinds of media that I create. So I create short form content, which it turns out is a great way to like practice. It's a great way to practice a certain type of communication. It's a great way to practice like getting to the point really fast. And it's made me a better communicator. I don't consume short form content. I never, I never scroll through content on TikTok or watch YouTube shorts or anything like that. It is poison to consume this stuff, right? The st I don't want my brain to be exposed to this, but I create it. And I mean, in part, I create it because I'm trying to get people, I'm trying to create messages that get people off of these platforms. So I'm kind of, I see it as like a, a, a prison break, right? It's like I'm going into the prison to try and break people out. But also as a creator, like the creative process of making this content is an interesting learning experience. It's very, very different from, you know, always when your brain is creatively engaged, it's always good for you in some way. So creating short form content is a very different story from consuming short form content. But it can also be all kinds of other stuff, right? It can be anything you 
It can be writing. It can be drawing, painting, designing. It can be anything you make with your hands, right? Anything where you are creating something out of nothing is creative activity. And creative activity is always a great learning experience. It's always also quite a rewarding experience. So that's the simple idea. Do less consuming, do more creating. Let's talk about skills. You want to spend your time building skills. And here, what I want to say is that, you know, the, the return the reason I'm saying skill building is because that's where you get a compounding return on time invested, okay? If you spend your time instead of blindly consuming nonsense like most people do, you spend that time building skills, that will give you an amazing return on investment, which means that like over time you build more and more skills or you you improve specific skills more and more and that makes you essentially more powerful in the world, right? A highly skilled, highly capable person has more power to make things happen and to shape their own destiny than someone who's only a consumer. Now, having said that, there are obviously skills that are higher value than others, but don't worry about that too much. So you might have an idea of what direction you want to take your life in. You might have an idea of, you know, you want a certain career and then there's clear skills you have to develop for this career. And there are certain skills that tend to be like very high, um, high leverage, let's say. So let's say sales. If you're someone who's really good at sales, any form of sales, right? If you're like, look, I can get on the phone with someone, I can sell something. Or I can design or you know, a landing page, I can design a website that will get people to buy a product. That's a very high leverage skill, okay? If you are really good at this, you will find it easy to get work, right? You'll be in demand. So it's also very difficult by the way, but <laughs> having said that, right? It's if you're like, hey, this is what I'm good at. I get people to spend money <laughs> on your thing you will be in very high demand. So that's a that's a great skill to develop. Or you might have some kind of a career skill where you go, okay, I wanna learn how to code, right? I wanna improve my coding. That's obviously skill building, right? But if you're not super clear about exactly what your goals are, exactly what your skill, what skills you want to develop, don't worry about it too much, basically. Because the reality is that usually we change course anyway a bunch of times, right? So you might start out thinking, okay, I want to be a coder, I want to build this skill, and then you you get into it. And then later on you realize, oh, actually, I'm more into maybe something adjacent, right? You get into UI, UX design or something, or whatever, right? And it's fine. The, the, the skills you build along the way are not wasted. And also, no matter what skills you learn, you are developing the meta skill of building skills. Okay, you get better and better at acquiring whatever skills you need, the more you do this. So don't sweat it too much. If you're like, I'm not sure what skills to build, just anything. Learn any skill that you're interested in. Okay, and it can, it can also be a, a useless skill. It's like learn how to do a handstand. Okay, you're probably never going to get paid for that, right? <laughs> but it's still, learn how to do a handstand. If that's something you want to do, cool, do it. So follow your curiosity. Don't worry too much if you don't have a very clear path in mind of how your skills get you paid or something like that, right? Get used to spending your time on skill building and training your brain to want the reward of getting better at stuff. That is a real life hack. So that's what I'd focus on. When it comes to building skills, the rule is also spend as much time as possible creating over consuming, okay? So spend as much time as possible creating and less time like a learning in the sense that, let me give you an example. Like many years ago, I got into, I learned user interface design and user experience design. So UI, UX design. The way I did this is I bought a few books on the topic, but rather than like spending hours and hours reading books with theory, I had specific projects where I was like, I need to create this kind of, I need to create a user interface for this product. And I took action as much as possible. I started designing and, you know, I basically, I'd read one chapter of a book or even just a few pages of a book and then immediately try to implement what I learn. And I would also go and find specific solutions to the specific problems I was having. I was actively designing things and actively like putting myself in the situation where I have these UI UX design problems to solve. And I was using learning material, in my case, books, almost like as a supplemental thing on the side in my skill development. And I found that this is like at least 10 times faster in order to, you know, you learn things at least 10 times faster doing this than if you do it the other way around. If you read a lot or learn a lot or watch a lot of tutorials, and especially if you do kind of these like theoretical 
exercises where you are not really having to solve. You know, you're doing like, oh, well, here's an example of some hypothetical app. Let's design an interface of this app that doesn't exist. You're not solving real problems in this case. Now, you have to have a real product in mind and be like, no, I'm going to create a, a full user experience for this product because the tricky things where you learn the most are always like on the edge cases. They're, they're not in the simple demo, right? It's the, it's the real world exposure is where you learn the most. So essentially here, the same rule applies. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where it's like, oh, I've watched 10 hours worth of tutorials in the last three days. That's not good. That's not a good way to learn a skill. You should be in a situation where you go, okay, I spent nine hours doing the thing and I spent one hour you know, reading about it, watching tutorials to try and fix specific problems. That's how you make rapid progress. And that's it. This is my advice for how to completely transform your life in just a few months. Of course, there's a lot more we could talk about of our optimizing various aspects of your life. And I'm happy to get into that in other episodes. If you have questions about this, you can leave a comment. You can also leave a voice note. I'll leave a link in the description where you can leave an anonymous voice note with questions and comments if you want me to answer those in future episodes. But rather than weigh you down with more details and more ideas on what to do, this really is the most effective thing to do. This is the stuff that matters the most. If you do nothing other than what I laid out in this episode, that will make an absolutely massive difference to your life. Now, in three months' time, doing this will probably not make you a you know, jacked millionaire. It probably won't get you from completely depressed to eternally happy or anything like that. But three months is enough. If you do this for three months, you will see such dramatic changes in your life and in the quality of your a conscious experience of life and the quality of mind that you develop from doing this, that you will you will find it hard to go back into zombie consumer mode. Okay. So I'm not saying that this is the total solution. This will give you everything you've ever dreamed of in three months. That's not realistic. But three months of doing this is long enough to change yourself and your outlook and also your brain to such an extent that you can never go back. So now enough consuming, enough learning. If you're up for this, you know what to do. And now is the time to do it. And if you're wondering, oh, but am I not digging my own grave? Because if, I, if you follow my recommendations, you stop watching my content. Yeah, that's great. Listen, I really don't want you to be watching my content. Like, I'm not here to try and be a content creator, right? I don't want to be a famous YouTuber or a podcaster or whatever. I don't care about that. I want to change people's lives. So if you take my advice and I never see you again because then you're busy like becoming a badass and living your life, that's great. So I, I'm just mentioning this because I always get these comments. It's like, oh, but you know, why are you posting this here or whatever? Uh, why are you telling people to get off TikTok on TikTok? Well, it's like, where, where else would I tell them, right? Like my goal is to make a difference in people's lives. And really what I'm advocating is if you follow my advice, eventually you will not need my advice anymore. That's the goal. I'm not trying to get you to become a, like a lifelong customer of my ideas or whatever. I'm trying to get you to become your own person. And in that sense, like, I hope that at some point I've done my job well enough that I never see you again. That is success to me. So with that said, enough of this. Take on the challenge. Go ahead and change your life.